So he turned his boat out a little and went on rowing alongside her in the direction of Jaffa. The fishes he caught flapped on the bottom of the boat while her hair billowed in the breeze. Her great eyes glanced at him for a second, then shyly flickered back to the water. He also felt shy and stared at the sand at her feet. He saw her feet leave imprints of her heel and big toe, which the sea soon lapped and effaced. He saw the shells she stepped on and her long skirt trailing behind her, wet and foamy. A shy, virginal lad was Sally. Hi, this is Marta from Ruby Soup for Pearl Juice, and today I am finally bringing the review of Our Weddings by Dorit Rabinoan. I have talked about Dorit Rabinoan a lot of times on this channel, and I have actually already done one video called Currently Reading, where I talked about this particular novel. But in case you haven't seen any of those videos, I'll give a quick summary of who Dorit Rabinoan is, as well of what this book is about. And then I'm going to go through pros and cons. So, Dori Rabinoan is a Israeli author of Iranian descent, and she has written four novels. This is her second one. And she is mostly famous for the book All the Rivers, which is a love story between a Palestinian man and a Israeli woman. It was challenged in Israel, but it also became a humongous bestseller, and it has also been widely translated and appreciated all over the globe right now. Our Weddings is a little bit different. It's not really a love story per se. It is more of a family saga. And those are really hard to pull off. But this book actually is able to take all the different characters in this family and through that explore many different themes. For instance, we have the mother of this family, Iran. Now, she is of Persian descent, but she lived in India before she moved to Israel, where she met her husband, Sali, who is also of Persian descent, but migrated from Iran to Israel. And we meet her when she's very young and a bit of a dreamer, very naive. And then we follow how she deals with motherhood because she then has five children and the way how they deal with motherhood in this book is very empathic but also not very idealized. Iran actually suffers postpartum depression after giving birth for the first time and while she is like a very loving mother then she tends to fret a lot and she can be a little bit overbearing, a very flawed person who means well but doesn't always know what to do in certain situations. One of the major themes in this book is that as the daughters and her son get older and they end up not being exactly how she expected them to be, then she's not quite sure how to handle that and doesn't really know how to talk to her daughters. There's also a scene with her when she is younger that really resonated with me because she's an immigrant like her husband and there's a scene where as a little girl she goes to a, sh to a shop and she's trying to buy something but she can't remember the Hebrew word for it and she says the wrong word and the shop owner doesn't understand her and then she keeps just repeating this word but it doesn't really help the situation and I'm an immigrant myself. I migrated from the States to Sweden when I was about five. And while I actually do speak the language fairly okay, then I sometimes have said sentences that aren't quite grammatically correct. And then people haven't quite understood me. And I really saw myself in Iran in that scene. And then we have the children. Now we have the firstborn son. Morris and the thing that I liked about his storyline is that he is actually very misogynistic. Well often in literature then misogynists get a get out of jail for free card or they're shown as people that can 
still get a lot of women and have healthy relationships, then this book actually averts that completely. Morris, due to the fact that he is somewhat chauvinistic, kind of sees women very much like as objects and has a dislike for women, then it causes him to have problems with the women around him. And even when he then like wants to get a girlfriend or, or a wife, then his misogyny is getting in the way of that. And we have this recurring theme that a lot of the daughters, when they get married, they have a very idealized image of this. And a big theme in the book is how you have these dreams and these expectations, but life doesn't really always work out how you would think that it does. One girl who she wants to marry a rich guy, and then it turns out that because he has to make a lot of money, he's often away. This girl, Sophia, she first thought that she would just be happy if she had a bunch of jewelry. But then she realized that she maybe wanted something a little bit more. One girl who actually didn't want to get married at all, uh, Lizzie. And she ends up just getting married because she has a phantom pregnancy. And then because she has this phantom pregnancy that kind of forces her to get married, then she gets trapped in an abusive relationship. Another thing that's kind of interesting that's kind of tied in with Lizzie is that she's a very sexual person. She's a female, she's a girl who has a very high sexual appetite and she has a very high sexual appetite from a very young age. And she's very much like how you often would read about teenage boys. Like that's basically Lizzie. But because she's a woman, then everybody around her is trying to oppress the side of her and trying to change her. I actually really like that message of how Dori W. Noam was kind of saying that that Lizzie's sexuality wasn't per se the problem. It was mostly that everybody around her is making such a big deal about it. And then that causes the problems in her life later on. And then you have Matty. And Matty is the youngest of the bunch. Maddie does seem to have a form of schizophrenia because she was actually supposed to be a twin, but her twin brother died in stillbirth. And then the book has this very ambiguous situation. Is Maddie dealing with guilt that she was the one that survived and that's why she's behaving the way she does? Or is it something else? It's very provocative to read about a child who is this violent and aggressive. But then I thought that it also dealt with a very interesting question about like, well, what, how do you deal with a child that behaves like this? And is it because her family has subconsciously made her feel guilt over being the one that survived or not? We were in one sec, she thought. All of us in Mama's womb. When we were little girls, the blood that flowed in our veins linked us together. When we grew up, the same sweat stuck to the shared skin from which we were all made. Flour, water, and salt. And now, she thought, turning back to look at the Turkish film on television, its bluish light flickering on bluish bruises. Now the thick glue of our tears is binding us once more into a single family. The writing, while it is really good, can be a little bit overly rich at times. So... If you're kind of looking for a book that's a very quick read, this is not the book for you. It's more of a slower read, and it's best to kind of consume in small tidbits. I think it's very much worth reading, even if it is a book that takes a longer time to finish. As another really quick note about just Dorit Rabinuan's books in general, if you're interested in reading literature that actually deals with Jewish fate as well as Jewish culture, you should definitely check Dorit Rabinuan out because she ties it into her books with such ease. And for someone who's an outsider like me, it is very informative and um, very interesting. All right. So that was my review of Our Weddings by Dorit Rabinuan. Have any of you read this book or have you guys heard of Dorit Rabinuan before? If you have, comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you liked this video, click the like button. Subscribe, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.